What's going on guys? We are back again and we are on my eBay dashboard. So we're gonna be reviewing our seller hub today just to give everyone an update on what I've been selling from January 1, essentially through the end of July. And the purpose of this video is to one, review sales, just go through the things that I'm selling, what's working well for me, um, but then also really kind of give a gauge of what some of the KPIs look like behind the scenes in my store. I did that for the first quarter, so we're gonna do it again for the second quarter. We won't go through every single item, but we're first gonna start off with some very high level sales. Uh, as you can see, we're roughly seven months through the year, so 58% of the year is complete. Now we have roughly 42% left. So uh, now really trying to extrapolate what these numbers are gonna look like for the end of the year. So I can hit some sales targets. All right, so as you can see, total sales, and as you're seeing these references to the previous time period, I did not sell exclusively on eBay last year. I still use consigners, so you really can't look at year over year improvement. Really just looking at this because I'm exclusively on eBay right now. So total sales, 214,000. You can see a big part of that is gonna to go to taxes, fees, and then the selling cost, which is the fees that I pay, which is absolutely insane. 15.1% of all of that. Now that does include promotions and that type of stuff. So 15% fees, ouch. Net sales is 169, so basically that's, bas that's what I'm taking home um, in terms of after me selling all of this. Now, I don't know why they really include taxes and fees in that uh, total. They really shouldn't do that because I don't see any of that and they're remitting that. You know, eBay is, is collecting all of that and remitting that, so uh, I never really see it. Quantity of items, 1,500 items sold, average sale price 137, that seems to be a sweet spot. So between 25 and 400, 500 with a couple occasional outliers, either way. You can see big mix break up here, auction versus uh, the sales via fixed price. Fixed price is the way to go. As I mentioned in my previous video, if you're doing auction, you're blowing your cards out and you are doing yourself a disservice unless you've got something that's really, really hot or just dead inventory that you're trying to get rid of. So uh, for the most part, success via fixed price. Uh, a lot of people coming back. So 10% of the buyers are coming back as repeats. That's pretty cool. I appreciate that. This is probably the juiciest part right here um, in terms of what I want to share with everybody is the month by month breakout. Now, a lot of this you could say is attributed to the timing of the market, but it's also what inventory I had ha on hand in what quantity. So as you all can see, sales really picked up in April and May. Now, does that mean that April and May was a better time to sell sports cards? Hmm, maybe. But I also had a lot of orders come back from PSA around that time. I want to say I had roughly 800 listings at one point and things were just selling like hotcakes. So uh, roughly $51,000 in April alone and then $37,000 in May. You can see as my inventory started to dwindle, as did, so did my sales. So down to $22,000 and then July. Honestly, the July number was really, really low up until the past couple of days once I've got a couple of orders that were sold, that came back that uh, helped to boost that July number up, including some Otani sales. So otherwise that July number would have looked ugly, very, very ugly. Um, so it really does depend on churning through inventory. You know, once you have most of your hot inventory sales, a lot of the inventory that's left is kind of dead, or at least it's not really something that's that's hot. It's going to sit on the on your on your store page for a while, you know, and eventually you're going to have to send a uh, run a couple of those things to auction. Let's go to traffic. So as we look at the traffic, uh, well, let's go back a little bit more so you can see. The store is essentially dead up until that last week. Traffic was pretty low, impressions was low, page views was kind of low, but they're starting to trend up. Uh, and then quantity sold was low up until this past week. But if we start to extrapolate this back, let's go back to May. I don't know if it's actually gonna be able to go back that far. Yep, you can see you can see at least quantity sold. So you can see way back in May, let's even see if it goes back further to April, which was my gangbusters month. So you can really see quantity sold really hot. Like I had a ton of stuff, selling a lot of cards every single day. I mean, that one day sold 30 items, 28 organically, only two promoted. Um, but again, the inventory just kind of is drying up. And, and then in June and July, things were really, really, really slow. I didn't have a lot of new inventory that I was getting added. You know, a lot of orders were at PSA. Uh, and now we're starting to get those things 
back now. So we're going to probably see more of this blue area as we trend into Q3. And we still have some outstanding orders at PSA as it stands right now. So uh, let's actually go all the way back to Jan. I wonder if it'll show January. Maybe it'll show a breakout view. Yep, so you can see the breakout view here, really, really hot in the beginning of the year, first two quarters, and then really kind of trailing off as we go in, oh, it's only going through March, okay. Well, you all get the hint. So let's go to orders, and we can look at some of the items that we have sold. Uh, all orders, not just the awaiting payment. So in the past 90 days, we can see we've got 76,000. This number, April and May, was trending around 120,000. So I was doing about $1,000 plus a day on average. That's about what we're coming out to right now is about $1,000 a day on average. By the time you look at you know, 214,000 uh, in total sales now, the take home is a little bit less than that, so a little bit less than 1,000. Currently on pace, take home net sales around 289. 289,000 is the pace for 2023. That's a little bit down compared to the previous years. And a lot of that is because I'm being very cautious with what I buy and sell, buy, grade, and sell this year. I personally don't see as much opportunity out in the marketplace as there has been in previous years. The market has become much more mature. It's much more uh, intelligent. I hear the stories of the National about PSA grading substantially more cards. I'm, I'm honestly in awe of that as I personally don't see a lot of opportunity in the marketplace for you know, what my brain can come up with. There's just not a lot of gradable stuff out there, especially when you're going from some of the older years, older sets. Um, Otani and Judge have really been my mainstays as well as a couple of others that we'll go through here in the sales. Um, I'm just amazed that there's still that volume that's getting submitted right now because um, I personally am not seeing the opportunity. Now, I'm not also getting involved in speculative investments won't go into what I'm buying right now. That's not the purpose of this video, but uh, I'm not speculating on a lot of things that other people are speculating on. I think that they're too risky. I don't think that they're actually gonna pay off. So I'm trying to be very much so tried and true and not waste my time. Um, did that a little bit in 2021 and 2022 with a couple of uh, purchases with some Bowman Chrome prospects that, you know, quality issues really uh, screwed over my ROI, so to speak, in terms of dampening those numbers. So now, you know, not being able to trust Tops or Panini and what type of quality that they put out uh, with some of our tried and true releases that come out usually, I'm a little bit more cautious now as opposed to you know years past where you know it's Bowman Chrome, surely there's gonna be some cards that are gradable. Past couple Bowman Chrome releases from 2021, 2022, depending on if it's fall, spring, et cetera, just have not been clean. Even some mega boxes have not been clean. Even this year's uh, Bowman Draft Sapphire was not clean. So lots of issues, lots of quality, really dampening some of my buys, which is why whenever you're gonna see some of the sales, the sales are going to be some of the same people over and over and over because I know that this is going to hit. Why buy other things whenever I know that these are going to be, again, things are going to work. So, so we go through some of these sales. Shohei Otani tops Chrome, tops Chrome inserts, tops Chrome PSA 10, more PSA 10s. Patrick Mahomes inserts, starting to get some, in, some uh, anticipation for him. More Otanis. Uh, Kenny Pickett, again, some of these you all probably saw in some of the reveal videos that I've done. Uh, so again, these are fresh items that have been sold um, and you know, fresh inventory that's been listed and it sells really, really quick because this is what people want. Uh, Brady insert, a couple of Otanis, more, <laughs> I mean, it's just all Otani, dude. Patrick Mahomes case hit, I actually may have sold that a little bit low, but it's not a great case hit card. Uh, deck ledge. I mean, you can see the ROI on some of these things. Just insane. I mean, if you watch some of the previous videos, I stated I was going to make roughly $6,500 to $7,000 on what, that one order specifically. You can see a lot of this stuff is listed in here. I'm going to probably far outseed, outseed that or exceed that based on some of these sales. Got uh, J-Rod and Bobby Witt actually starting to move a couple of their cards, especially Bobby Witt. Uh, he seems to be performing a little bit well. J-Rod is quietly starting to put up some numbers that may end up looking like having a respectable year, although his hobby status has been dampened. But I mean, it's, it's Shohei Otani's world right now. It's basically him and nobody else. So uh, again, lots of Topps Chrome, lots of Otani's. 
Jackson Trurio is starting to get hot, not only in the minors, but also in the hobby. People are starting to, to see that. He's starting to put up counting stats that look pretty respectable in the minors. He started off very slow in double A, or at least slow that would dampen uh, hobby appeal. Let's just put it that way. But that's starting to reverse, so he's probably going to have some hype going into the spring. Um, Brian Reynolds, eh, random. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Blue Scope, surprised I got that price out of that card. Uh, random Gabe Velarde, more Otani, more Otani, more Otani, just doing phenomenally well. These are amazing sales, um, but they also may be great buys depending on how Otani does the rest of the way. The reason why I did sell these for the price I did is I've got more of them getting graded. Two more refractors, a pink, a sepia, a prism. Um, I'm at a 2017 mega box, a 2018 mega box. Uh, so I still have a lot more chrome and a lot more shine coming as it relates to Otani. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, dude, the pinks, <laughs> just crushing those, man. Just doing so, so well. These updates, uh, $89.99, that was about right around my expectations. Uh, this Julio Rodriguez PSA 9, very happy with that sale. Very, very, very happy. Anytime I can get J-Rod around break even or at least break even on a PSA 9, that's, that's a good deal for me. Uh, now we're starting to get into some of the older sales that are just slow things that are in inventory that's not hot, but people just wanted them and they gave me offers that, you know, throughout July, it wasn't a lot of volume, but at least it was good ROI on some of the things that I sold, at least the tens, the nines, it's just me getting rid of stuff. Um, this Jason Robertson, really, really good sale here. Nolan Ryan autograph PSA 10. Double my money on that. Anthony Hardaway, it's probably going to be break even, maybe a little bit less after fees. Uh, Shoei Otani, again, July 28th. He is, was ascending. That was before his crazy weekend, um, but still did very good on that card. It's probably a $20 card. Sell it for $185. Um, again, Julio PSA 9s. I'll, I'm happy with that. I paid $15 to get it graded. Yes, I'm losing money, but I'm maximizing the sale. Um, this Mahomes, I may have sold a little bit cheap, but these Sensation tie-dyes have started to die down because they come out with them every single year. I think the 2022 or 2023 one sold for like 100 bucks recently. So I thought 350 was pretty reasonable. Um, that's a good J-Rod sale. Again, probably didn't make any money on it, but anytime I can get rid of J-Rod inventory and break even, doesn't matter if it's PSA 10 or PSA 9, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and you can see some of these sales are actually really, really good. Like a Masterpieces, Max Scherzer, framed red. Yeah, it's low pop, but it's Max Scherzer. He's not really hot. These are cards that are going to collectors. Um, Aaron Judge came back, so I'm assuming that that's probably what prompted that purchase. Uh, another Anthony Hardaway, this is the PSA 10 version. So for 150, thought I did really well in this Magic Johnson at 110. Again, just clearing out inventory off the books just to get me some more cash flow to get, go make more purchases. Uh, two of these Jackson Churros, one forty-nine ninety-nine. Um, got more Otani, so this is a little bit earlier in the week, so that card's obviously gone up. Um, Greg Maddox, dang, I forgot I sold that. Yeah, so I did pretty well on that. I think I paid roughly ninety dollars, got it graded by Beckett and uh, two hundred, so did pretty good. Miguel Cabrera PSA nine, happy to move that. Uh, also happy to move this X Fractor. It was close to break even. Uh, Dustin Pedroia did. Probably break even on that, if not made a little bit of money. I think that was maybe a $15, $16, $17 dollar purchase. Bryce Harper Orange. That's a great sale. Great sale. Love it. Did did well on that. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, PSA 10, did very well on that. I think those purchases were in the 105, 110 range plus grading fee, so that does pretty well. 50 bucks for Otani, Mahomes. Oh wow, that's a great sale on that too. I have the red one. And that's why I'm glad that I sold that one because I do have the red, which I think is a better card. This is a good sale on this. Um, probably didn't make a whole lot. I can't remember exactly what I paid for this Jordan, but 350 for a PSA 9. I thought that was pretty strong. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. autograph patch PSA 9. I thought that was pretty strong sale too, especially for a 9, usually 9s. I mean, I'm not going to really do all that well. Bonds was a strong sale. That was a good repeat buyer. This PSA 10, great buy for this person because that card has definitely gone up in value since then, um, as has that. And um, I'm not sure about the revolution. It depends on whenever somebody buys it now. Ozzy Smith, that was mm, maybe a little bit lower than what I expected, uh, to be quite honest. The revolution Mahomes, a little bit less. Uh, Magic Johnson, that's about all I could probably get out of that card, probably break even slight loss. 
two of these nines for 60 a piece, that's great. It's honestly $10, $15 card plus 15 to get graded. So break even minus fees, maybe a slight loss, but boom, no big deal. Uh, Julio Rodriguez probably still made money on that, even though it's PSA 10 and his value has decreased. Whenever these cards I got back, they're what, 200, 150 to 200 a pop. Can't liquidate all of them at one time. And now these are the last ones that I have left and the last ones are selling for like 70 bucks. So big range in terms of that. And, you know, it's just J-Rod not performing well. James Woods starting to get some attention. Definitely starting to get some attention. Uh, he is now a top five prospect. So people are uh, looking at that. Jack, another Jackson Churio. Obviously, people are clamoring to that. My, that was a great sell on the Buster Posey. I had this in the store for a while. Finally, a collector got it. It's an autograph patch number to 15. Great card for a fan. Uh, and this was a great sell as well. Um, Mike Trout Jumbo Patch, 225. I paid 200 for it. I did not grade that well. I'm not doing what I wanted to do with that card. So I'm glad I got out of it at a, a price that I was happy with. This Matt McLean, yes, he was hot. He was very hot early. Um, this is probably the biggest loss I've taken on a card. I bought this card for, I want to say, $4,000 whenever it came out. He started the year off horribly in the minors, was not the player that we thought. Now it's 2023. He is actually kind of the player that we thought. But because his performance stunk in the minors, he lost all hype. All the hype on the Reds prospects is going to Ellie De La Cruz. And Matt McLean's probably a better player. It is a fickle, fickle hobby that we live in. He is very vanilla, and Ellie is the opposite of vanilla, and people don't like vanilla. They don't like vanilla. Just leave it there. Leave it, leave it at that. He's a, he's a boring player that bats eight, has an 850 OPS, nine, 900 OPS. Not flashy. Uh, Shoei Otani, Rainbow Foil, probably sold that a little bit cheap. That's probably like a two, 250 card now. Um, maybe more. Did pretty well in that Kobe. PSA 8. Again, these are all collector cards. So the things that are selling right now, these are not highly speculative items. Um, Mike Trout, Otani, I probably could have done a little bit better than that now, obviously. Now we're into... Doo -doo -doo -doo, I forget exactly where we're at. So PSA 9, I'm trying to think. Is this June? Yeah, this is June sales now. So 200 on that judge. I think that's great. He was hurt. Anytime I can move some of these judges, that, especially whenever he's hurt, it's great. 175 on that. Sold probably three or four of those this year for that price to that same buyer, if I'm not mistaken. He's bought a lot of those. Uh, PSA 9, great. Great sell on that. Uh, buying those really cheap. Mike, oh, that's a great sell for the Mike Trout autograph. PSA 9, 400 bucks. Take that all day. I probably made a little bit of money on that. Um, and that's great. So anytime you can get a PSA 9 on an item like that and still be able to squeeze out a break even, that is a win, dude. It does not help your ROI at all, but you're not losing money on it. And you lost the gamble of the 9-10 game. The 10 game gives you upside. The nine game, if you can break even, it's like no downside. So, you know, I, I still, even though this is not a win, so to speak, it is a win because, hey, I gambled. I, it did not pay off. And, you know, there's no real downside to me losing. So that's a, I, I consider that a win. Bowen Chrome, uh, so that, great, great purchase there. Kind of the same thing. Again, buying these maybe 25, 30 bucks. A couple of them I had to pay 40, 45. So it just depends on how I have the numbers allocated, but then selling them for 45. This Aaron Judge too, kind of the same thing, a PSA 6. I kept getting offers in the 250 range, et cetera. Nobody wanted to buy it because it was PSA 6. Has uh, like an edge issue or surface issue, something like that, of course, because Topps quality sucks. Uh, card got authenticated by you know the eBay authentication program, the CSG folks. So obviously they didn't catch the air. Thanks, guys. Uh, but finally, I did sell this card for what I wanted to get it sold for. Um, uh, I have moved all my Jackson Trio mega boxes with the exception of the PSA eights. Uh, they have massive surface issues, so I probably won't be able to sell those. Randy Johnson gold refractor autograph. And I want to say I paid maybe a hundred, one twenty for that. So moving to two twenty five is a good price. Show a tiny gold mini refractor. So this is in June. So I sold that for two fifty. I've got another one in possession and I've got two more that just got graded by Beckett nine five at the national raw card review. I'm getting them slabbed. This is a, a sale that kind of makes me a little bit sad. Um, okay, Ellie de la Cruz, Bowman Chrome Orange Sapphire Autograph, 6000 Okay, I paid $3,000, $3,100, for the card. Sent it to PSA, 9 Sent it to Beckett, 9.5. Great, sell it for 6000 Phenomenal, phenomenal. Problem. The problem is, right after I sold this, I want to say, I, I, I'm trying to say June 13th, 
I think it was a couple of days later is when he hit for the cycle or did something crazy. So another orange, I want to say it was either orange sapphire, maybe a PSA 10 sold for like 10K. Now I know it's PSA 10. Still though, dude, dude, there's a lot of money that was pouring into this dude. Either way, I made money on it. I have another one, PSA 9, sent it to Beckett, Beckett 9, cracked out, sent again to Beckett, Beckett 9, same subgrades. So the other one that I have, it's another one that I paid roughly, you know, 2,700, 2,800, 2,900 for. It's a, PS, or a Beckett 9. I have it in possession. I'm going to auction it off here soon. It's probably going to be more, it's going to be more than a $3,000 card at auction. Um, I'm, man, I'm just very, very sad that they did not get that one a 9.5 because if I got both as a 9.5, I could have sold one that would have basically paid for both of them. And that other one would have been a gravy sale. Either way, I'm, I'm doing well on it regardless. So I'm just talking for no reason. Uh, Shoei Otani Ginter Mini Black. Dude, I've, I've harped on this for a while. I've said the same thing about Julio Rodriguez. Unfortunately, Julio Rodriguez did not have a great year this year, but I had a ton of his parallels that were like this. Collectors love the blacks. They love the golds. They love the Ginter Xs. If you can get those of the right players, they're going to do very, very, very well. Aaron Judges do well. Shoei Otani's do well. It's just one of those cards that does very, very well. And anytime I can find these, I will buy them because they don't come up that often. International Affair Otani. So I've been selling Otani all spring. This one, hmm. Kind of wish I had back. Although the person who bought it is trying to auction it off and make money and he's doing so unsuccessfully. But, you know, I paid $1,500 for this. Sent it to... I can't remember if I sent it to PSA first. No, I sent it to Beckett because I knew I, I was pissed about some previous grades they gave me. Um, so I sent it to Beckett, $3,000 sale, basically doubled my money minus fees uh, and grading costs. So maybe $1,000 is what I made on this. Um, but it's a cool card, dude. I really, 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 really miss having this card in my possession. Uh, Juan Soto, PSA 10. Dang, dude, I gave this guy a deal. An autograph patch, PSA 10, 300. I think it's because Juan Soto maybe started off the year really, really bad. Oh, no, no, no. This is my repeat soda buyer. This guy buys all my sodas. That's why. So I gave him I gave him a good deal because he was buying a bunch of stuff. He, he always buys a bunch of stuff for me, so I, I kind of cut him a deal. Um, J-Rod... Patrick Kane, I did very well on that card. That was higher than what I paid Raw for it, even the PSA 9. Orange Refractor, PSA 10, Ripken for 226. Did well there once. So it's our repeat buyer. Uh, da, 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 to the moon, probably lost money. Wow, Crusade, 149.99, June 16. <laughs> Strong sale. Dude, the ROI on this is going to look really, really good. I've not updated my ROI numbers, but I'm just going through these sales, and this just looks... Looks sexy, man. Looks like it's going to be a good year. I think. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, knock on wood. There could be some L's in here that I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, PSA 10, Magic Johnson 170. Um, yeah, dude, dude, I'm doing good on all this stuff. All this stuff is doing really well. PSA 9, Mega Box Purple. I think I did well on that because uh, Elio was starting to pop off. Uh, another show here for 120. Now I'm selling this for 150. I sold another one for 170 this morning. Um, uh, did sell this Logan Webb. I lost a couple hundred bucks on this, but it was dead inventory. I'm actually very happy to get rid of it for that price. Mariana Rivera 215. Not really making a lot of money on that, uh, but I had multiples and I just wanted to move some inventory. Uh, did well on any dude doing very well on that. It's crazy ROI. It's a 10 15 card. Get it graded and you basically triple your money. Jordan Walker, PSA 10. I think I doubled my money on that. Jordan Walker hype died fast, very fast. This is a card I lost some money on. I think I bought two of these from the same seller, four, four fifty a pop. That one came back in eight, so I lost a lot of money on that one. It means I have to do a lot of sales to overcome that, so that was a loss. Uh, this was a, not a loss. I mean, I think I paid maybe 20 or 30 bucks for this card and a greater PSA 10, 350. So guess what? Those two wash out. We move on with life. Oh, this, this is a great sale. Paid roughly 60 cent, no, 70, 80, 90 dollars for this. Somewhere in that ballpark, sold it for 590, right before the finals. Pop 71. And they said, do they say Nicola, nobody likes Nicola? I mean, yeah, in aggregate, nobody likes Nicola whenever you compare him to LeBron and MJ and Kobe. I get it. But I mean, that was one of my better sales of that month in terms of a you know, margin gain. Uh, let's see those. Oh man, dude, I wish I had those back. That magnetic fur. 
Sold that low. Oof. 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 Uh, J Rod Purple Tin. Yeah, I'm just giving away J Rods at this point. And some of this stuff looks auctioned. Yeah, some of the, there's some auctions in here. PSA 9 collector card. Yep. A lot of this looks like auction material. So it's just me getting rid of some dead inventory. I can't believe that LA sold for that low. That was, and that was June 10th. He was kind of heating up around that time. Somebody got a great buy, great time for that. But again, I made up for it in the back end. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Shohei Gold. Uh, yeah, some of these nines. The J Rods, depends on the J Rod. Like that, I paid $5.15 to get graded, 22. It's PSA 10. I made no money on it. I refunded them somehow. Maybe it didn't get there. Uh, yeah, I definitely didn't make money on it then if it got lost in the mail. J Rod Silver, da, 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 Gold Minted, da, 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 da. what else? What else? Okay, it's a good sale. Good sale. Good, very good sale. A Zion Williamson second year orange jersey, 75 bucks. <laughs> yeah, dude, let's go. <laughs> Do that all day long. These are the cheapest that I was selling these Anthony Volpe Bowman drafts for. Um, first ones were popping off in the 80, 90 range. Again, I paid a dollar, two bucks for them, $15 to get graded, still making money at 35, but just getting rid of dead inventory that I never would have graded had he not got called up to the Yankees. So, uh, okay. Anything else of note that is going well? PSA 8.5 for 180 bucks, lost money, but got rid of inventory. So you can see there's a mix here. There's things that I'm making money on. There's some things that are PSA 8s, PSA 9s that are break even. Um, and then there's also some that I'm losing a little bit of money on, but the, I think that still, if you can mitigate your losses as you sell some of the stuff for things that don't pan out your way, great. That is fantastic. Like this is a great sale. This is June 5th, a Topps Chrome Aaron Judge PSA non rookie, $59.99. All day long. I, that is a win. That is a big, big, big win. Now, this is me liquidating, again, a bunch of inventory for J-Rod because I had a lot of slabs of his. Um, some of them I've sold in person and done pretty well on them. Uh, this was a big order. Wow, this is one of my first orders that came back. Dang, I forgot I had two of those. Dang, that guy cleaned house. Way to go, auction one cent. Yeah, those were all at auction, too. So great time, great timing there. You got two of those. I mean, those are like 600 bucks now. So great job. Uh, Bo Jackson, autograph PSA 10, 242. Again, pay 120, 130. Boom, done. Um, 51. So you can see as the time is going on, these, these have done worse. Anthony Davis, PSA 10, 146. Uh, who knows what I paid for it? I mean, I probably didn't make any money. Nobody cares about basketball anymore, it seems like. I don't. I definitely don't. Uh, Elodo Cruz, PSA 10. That was the last autograph PSA 10 I had of him. Again, you're, I was buying those for 140, 150, 325. Great sale. Jason Robertson, PSA 10 at auction. Horrible sale. That was horrible. Horrible. I thought that would be 2, 250. Easy. At auction, horrible. But again, dead, dead inventory. You can see the top scrims I was selling earlier, 180. I was like, wow, that's a great sale. Now they're, you know, I'm, you can see I sold a bunch of them at 320, and that's under market. It's because it's got a bunch of them. Um, but I'm actually selling them slightly under just to get rid of them, like, and I can get some more money and roll it into some other stuff. So 149, dang, it's because he just started the year off hot, man. Started the year off hot. Otani's driving a lot. Uh, David Robinson. And there, so the other mix here between two different sports, basketball to some degree and baseball, Hall of Fame superstar autographs. I think those are still a good option because it is hard to get gym mint grades on autograph cards, uh, especially you know superstars from some of the sets that we're looking at. So people like that. People like to collect some of these types of things. So um, that's why you will see me gravitate towards some of that. Now, some of the purchases that I made in 2022, I'm not making in 2023. Like all this junk, I'm not making these purchases anymore. Like. I'm not speculating on any rookie logos for baseball. I'm not buying Corbin Carroll. I'm not buying Adley. I mean, I might pick up some stuff, but I'm looking at their prices and I'm like, these are your prices. This is Shohei Otani prices. And he still has cards that are coming to market that are gradable. Why would I buy you guys over here whenever you're not even the best at your position? Otani's the best at two position, like two sides of the ball. I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling, honestly. And I've seen some of the comments underneath uh, some of my previous videos, one of the more recent Otani break videos, and people echoing the same thing that I say, where they hear people say, I've not bought Otani yet. I'm just not sure if I'm a believer. 
what more do you need to like see? He's literally having the greatest baseball season of all time. What do you mean you, you're not sure if you want to, you want to buy Corbin Carroll instead? <laughs> okay, by all means, you do that. Stay away from my market. Don't buy what I want to buy. Stupid. Absolutely stupid, dude. I'm telling you, Pete, Pete you got to have a feel for it. If you don't have a feel for it, it's just it's hard to explain, man. That's all I can say. All right, 350 for these patty cakes. Paid 100, 100, yeah, maybe 100 a piece for those. 350, PSA 10. This is a great example of me buying stuff after the Super Bowl because Super Bowl comes out, people sell a bunch of cards. They're like, oh, cards are going to go up. You know, winning a Super Bowl brings out inventory to the marketplace. I scoop up the inventory that's been sitting there, you know, in a closet for a while. Next thing you know, boom. We're at $350 PSA 10. So win more Super Bowls. Yes, I will buy after a Super Bowl. It doesn't mean that that's not the time not the time to buy. It's a great time to buy because inventory comes out onto the marketplace that otherwise would have been sitting in closets for a while. So I love it. Win more Super Bowls, Patty. Love it. Um, Kate Cunningham, get rid of all that junk. It's all junk. Junk, junk, junk. Unfortunately, I still have a lot more of that junk that I got to get rid of. PSA 9, great sell at the time. Not so great now. Higher. PSA 10, $30, $40 card, $135. Um, wow. Oh, yeah, that was... Oh, yeah, it's a uh, select. Okay. $35. Great sale. Great, great, great sale on that. <sighs> this is a great sale too, dude, but I love this card though. $1,600. I really regret having this one sold though. June 5th, man, that was not long ago. This is like $2,2500 now. Oh, and I had three of these that I sold, I think. Um, yeah, dude, the spring was so well. We're in June, too. We're not even in May or April. I can't go back that far. I can't go back. So I'm just skimming through, skimming through, skimming through. Yeah, dude, whenever I crunch these numbers, things are going to look really, 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 really good. I think. I hope. I'm confident that they will. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I don't have any gauge on what my ROI for the year is going to look like because I've not performed my uh, calculations at all throughout the entire year. I'm still behind on that. So I'll get that done uh, at some point. But wow, this is incredible. Yeah, some of these sales look very strong. So you can see the Volpe 7863. Earlier ones doing pretty well. Again, I paid a dollar or two dollars a card for those. So doing really, really well on those. Again, these update judges, Judge, Judge and Otani were what I was buying in the spring. I just, you know, those were the guys to go after. Um, yeah. Hopefully you guys are getting a sense of uh, what it is that I was buying and selling. And of course, what some of the wins and losses were. So wins, Otani, Judge. Mm, mans were Julio Rodriguez. I mean, for the most part, you could say loss. Like if, you're, if you were buying his graded cards in the spring, you're way down. If you were buying, grading, and flipping, you may be break even to slightly down on Julio. In the beginning, up. Later on into the summer, the sales way down. So I think it's probably close to a wash, if not a slight L on Julio in terms of getting stuff graded. Um, just because the grading fees, especially for this low end stuff, is just such a large percentage of the overall cost of the item that I don't know if I have uh, sold enough above margin in order to offset that grading cost. So J-Rod's probably been a wash. Yeah, especially if you look at stuff like this. I mean, that card is probably a $40, $50 card that I bought, 15 to get graded. So it's like 55, 60 in it, 9.99 at auction. So yeah, not that great. Um, but then you have something like this. I paid 70, 80 for, again, 15 to get graded. So 85, 95 in it, 127 after fees. Again, even the tens aren't doing that well. Like, so yeah, it just depends on the item. Depends on the item. Okay, we're gonna go all, we're just gonna keep skimming. That way people have a good visible representation of some of the stuff that I've sold. Um, blank slate PSA 9, I think I lost a little bit of money on that. Oh, that's a great sale. Flamethrowers insert, those are rare, low pop. Uh, Deckle Edge PSA 973, that was a great sale early in May. Um, yeah, dude. Did well, did so, so well. Jack's Jury 120, I had a bunch of those. I did not get a single PSA 10. And I lost money on all of them because I think I paid 140, 150 a pop for them. So again, not really good ROI at all. ROI killer, because even if you have break even and the ROI is zero, it just, you know, it's wasted money. It's a wasted opportunity. But you roll the dice to degrade, 
you know, if, a, if you strike out and you can hopefully break even or not lose a whole lot, then I think that's great. Um, but again, that's Mega Box. Was, that was the first Mega Box release that actually had surface scratches or roller marks, not surface scratches, roller marks from any set that I've ever seen. And it was quite disappointing. The fact that I spent that much and got eight, nine, ten Jackson Churio Mega Boxes, I stayed away from the regular set because they were scratched. Little did I know, Tops is going to F up Mega Box for the first time ever. Never have they had surface issues up until recently. Now none of them can be trusted. It's like, dude, horrible. Horrible. Oh, it was a great sale. Oh, that was a great sale. It's a great sale. Oh, yeah. $30, $40 raw card, $355. Yeah, it's a game use MJ. Oh, I do. oh, no, I canceled those. I did sell two. I sold one at a show and I have one. That's right. That's right. So I sold one at a show, I want to say for 300 or 350 somewhere in that range. And I still have one. But they were great sales, but then they got canceled. Asshole. Uh, Magnetic Fur, 250 Yeah, it's worth way, way more than that now. Joe Burrow, 350 Great, great sale. It was like a $50, $60 purchase. Zero numbered rookie, rare, highly sought after. Don't see those that often. Um, ba -ba -ba. Mariano Rivera, 250 So you can see the last, the one I sold after that was what, 210 220 So, you know, sold both of them. Uh, made money on both. Aaron Judge, BGS9, 449 That's a strong sale. Did very, very well on that. Um, you know, if it's a, I'm surprised that his values are not as high as Shohei Otani's for 2018 Bowman Chrome parallels. They're just not. I don't know why. Now, granted, that's the only 28 that 2018 is the only Otani Bowman Chrome that there is that is a base card because he did not have a prospect card. Yes, he had a World Baseball Classic in 2017. It's a little bit different. It's a mega box. Whereas Judge had 2013, he had 2014 prospect, he had 2015, he had 2016 probably, and then 2017. So, you know, he had he was he was hoard out, as they say, by tops. This is a phenomenal sale. Magic Johnson, Green Prism, or from Select, PSA 10, number 99, 360. What a sale. All right, so I got to wrap this up. Hopefully you guys get a hint. We're, we've gone all the way back to May. So it's basically all of Q2 with the exception of April. But again, on pace to roughly about 300,000 in sales. Um, and yeah. It's all going to depend on getting more inventory to PSA and whether or not we can find opportunity in the second half of the year to actually keep this trend going. Usually around this time, we've got some big releases that are coming out, Bowman Chrome, then Bowman Draft at the end of the year. But recently, Bowman Chrome has not been that profitable for me. It's more international speculative prospects, guys like Christian Hernandez, Luis Rodriguez, there's no money made on any of those prospects in recent years in 2021, 2022. It's just, I can't think off the top of my head right now of who those drivers were. But again, I stayed away from those releases. Um, actually, that was uh, James Wood and Ellie. Okay, so if James, if there's a James Wood or Ellie, actually they were the spring. See, I'm getting them all confused. There's three releases. Either way, those are releases to look forward to. Bowman Sterling's coming out. Um, I'm likely going to be looking more towards some of the Hall of Fame slash uh, big league player type sets, really looking for Shohei Otani parallels. It's probably going to be the main thing I'm looking for, um, unless there's some prospects that really uh, are catching my eye in terms of getting attention. Um, I do like a couple of the prospects in the minors right now. Unfortunately, they already have their Bowman Chrome cards out, and of course, they're from it sets that have quality issues. So the opportunity there for speculation going into the spring, I think, is a little bit limited. Perhaps there could be some guys uh, in this upcoming uh, MLB or at least Bowman Draft product that are going to be worth going after, but we shall see. Um, the back half of the year is a lot more murky as opposed to spring or you know Q1, Q2. Second half of the year, man, it's going to be a little bit more murky. And again, obviously we're going to have the NFL season, so that's going to potentially create some opportunity mid-season, in-season, et cetera. And of course, Mahomes is always going to be Mahomes, although his inventory is drying up, not as many rookies to grade. He doesn't sign autographs presumably anymore, or at least not in quantity that we can see. So yeah, there's just not a lot of opportunity out there. Basketball is really struggling. Who knows if Wimby is going to pan out? Uh, stars are unlikable. It's baseball, maybe some NFL, Patrick Mahomes, maybe some Joe Burrow, maybe another quarterback who's doing well, in-season flips. But, man, opportunity right now seems to be dwindling. But 
we'll see. I'm always going to stay or uh, try to stay up to date on what opportunity is out there. Hopefully you guys like this. Uh, let me know what you all think down below. I know a lot of people are asking for this. A lot of other people are asking what is it that you've been buying lately. So I'll do one of those as well. Uh, but definitely excited to uh, give this information to you guys. So, all right. We'll see you guys next time.